Hey guys, I'm John and welcome to Respect Your Intellect. There's a really important study that was released recently by NASA. It studied twins where one was in space for one year while the other remained on Earth. The results really shed a lot of light on what happens to our bodies and even our minds during spaceflight. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and let's get started. The twins are Scott and Mark Kelly, and both of them are astronauts. Scott is the twin that spent 342 days in space and set a record for the longest mission yet. This mission is well known and aptly named as the One Year Mission. Mark Kelly is now a retired astronaut and remained on Earth during the mission. Before this study, we were only able to monitor individuals closely and see the changes happening within them, but we had no external comparisons. Because of this, we weren't able to tell if the changes within the astronauts were things that would have happened to them anyway. We could do it with genetically identical mice, flies, and plants, but this study finally allowed us to do it on humans and see how the human system adapts as a whole. Here is a quote from the researchers that represents this study very well. Thus, this study and its methodologies represent a uniquely controlled and integrated framework for comprehensively quantifying astronaut biology in space. Since the studies usually include thousands of subjects, they are usually able and allowed to give very detailed information on the results. Unfortunately, with this study, everyone knows the subjects and there are only two of them. So for privacy reasons, they can't be completely as open as anonymous studies, like sharing the genome openly, because this would have implications for them and their family, or even their descendants. NASA was always studying human physiology in space, but now they opened up new branches of study in preparation for missions to Mars, which would take three years to complete. One branch studies the molecules in the human body and how they change with spaceflight, this is called Molecular Omics Systems Biology. Omics incorporates many fields that ends with omics, like genomics, epigenomics, transcriptomics, um, metabolomics. Uh, this branch is known as the collective characterization and quantification of pools of bi uh, biological molecules that translate into the structure, function, and dynamics of an organism. Another branch uh, studies behavioral health and uh, cognition, and the last branch studies microbiology and the microbiome, which is the culture of microorganisms that live on or in our bodies. During this mission, they took samples before, during, and after the flight from both twins to compare. They took saliva and cheek swabs for uh, the epigenome and DNA. They took urine samples for proteins and uh, metabolites. They took blood samples for metabolites, proteins, epigenome, RNA, and DNA, in other words, for everything, and they took stool samples for the metagenome. Microgravity comes with a lot of challenges like confined spaces, dietary limitations, uh, radiation, isolation from family, and circa uh, circadian disruptions. So let's talk about the results they found up to now on how the human body adapts itself to meet these challenges. The first is that the body mass of Scott, the space twin, decreased. This is probably due to increased exercise and controlled nutrition during the mission, but he also consumed 30% less calories than the researchers anticipated. His bone breakdown and bone reformation cycle was also found to be faster during the first half of the mission and slowed down in the second half when there was less exercise. It was also found that the heavy exercise in space uh, increased the IGF-1 hormone levels, which is implicated in bone and muscle health. Then there was the microbiome diversity that changed profoundly during spaceflight. Researchers think that the food consumed in space might have had um, a role to play, but um, or as could other environmental factors. Researchers found a big shift in the ratio of two dominant bacterial groups, um, that had essentially inverse proportions. This all returned to normal after landing, so the changes were not permanent. As of when Scott landed, they also found that his uh, inflammation increased significantly. 
This C-reactive protein levels is a widely accepted biochemical marker for inflammation, and there appeared to be a spike in inflammation soon after the landing. Uh, it did return to normal before the end of the study. They also tested the flu vaccine in space and found that it works just as well uh, as on Earth. The body's immune reaction was exactly the same as is expected on Earth. The urine samples uh, taken during spaceflight also indicate that spaceflight could interrupt collagen regulation. Collagen is the most abundant protein in the human body. It's the major uh, component that make up several body parts including tendons, ligaments, skin and muscle. Then we have the fact that our blood pools in our legs due to gravity on Earth, but in space the blood is more evenly spread throughout the body. The feeling is a bit like when you're hanging upside down on monkey bars and you feel the pressure in your head increase. Well that's how Scott felt in space for one year. You can see that facial puffiness in most pictures of astronauts in space. The human body detects this increase of fluid in the upper body as overhydration and works overtime to reduce that fluid as urine. It was also found that the heart becomes rounder and weaker in space since it doesn't have to pump as hard. This is because gravity isn't pulling down the blood and because astronauts have 20% less fluid in their bodies while they're in space. This all returned to normal shortly after landing, but it's still not known whether the changes to the heart's shape or function are permanent, or if they'll have long-term health effects. Then there were uh, the telomeres that received a lot of attention. The telomeres are the little caps at the end of chromosomes that protect DNA, a bit like the handles on a jump rope. As we age, the telomeres become shorter, so it's usually associated with aging. But they can also get shorter as we experience other things like stress, different environments, and different lifestyles. Scott's telomeres in space actually lengthened, which tends to suggest that if we put everything else aside, and this was the only factor, we could potentially live longer in space. After landing and before the study concluded, Scott's telomeres were found to have shortened back to, the, uh, to normal once he was back on Earth. Next we have the more major issues that we'll want to resolve before we send more astronauts on very long missions. In space we're much more vulnerable to radiation like cosmic rays, uh, those can damage our DNA. Space twin Scott Kelly showed more, uh, more DNA instability than his twin that remained on Earth. DNA alterations change how this, uh, the immune system is regulated, how the proteins are expressed, how we metabolize what we eat, uh, as well as the microbiome, which, is, uh, which are all the microorganisms that live in and on our bodies that keep us healthy. Some of the DNA instabilities found in Scott are linked to infertility and cancer. There was also a dysregulation of genes which are associated with immune functions and uh, DNA repair that did not return to normal by the conclusion of the study. It was found that about 91% of the changes in the DNA reverted back to normal after landing, but that leaves 9% of the changes that haven't reverted back yet, so we don't know if those changes are permanent. Then there were uh, vascular changes like thickness and stiffness that didn't return to normal either. Uh, by the conclusion of the study. So we don't know if those are reversible yet or permanent. There was also musculoskeletal issues like muscle atrophy and bone deconditioning that we need solutions for. Then there's the cognitive tests which tested things like mental alertness, spatial orientation and uh, recognition of emotions. This stayed largely unchanged during spaceflight, but there was a more pronounced decline after landing and was still persisting six months until the end of the study. Uh, this could simply be due to adjusting back to Earth's gravity or having an extremely busy schedule uh, after the landing. Since we don't know for sure yet, the cognitive studies are being ramped up now. Another one of uh, the big problems is that we've confirmed uh, observations that were made in many other astronauts and that's the changes to the structure of the eye, resulting in vision changes. There's a swelling of the optical disc, a flattening of the shape of the eye, and uh, the other structural changes that happen uh, that leads to changes in vision. It can lead to blurry vision, blind spots, or even more. 
Many astronauts were pilots with perfect vision when they were on Earth, but in space they need to wear glasses as their vision gets negatively affected. This is called neuroocular syndrome, and those changes persisted until the end of the study, so we don't know yet if the changes are permanent. We need to figure this out and find a solution because one thing we do know is that it's not good for our eyesight. The uh, increased cranial pressure combined with the neuroocular syndrome are collectively known as visual impairment intracranial pressure syndrome or VIIP for short. Overall, the study demonstrated how the human body can adapt to a multitude of changes induced by spaceflight and prolonged exposure to that environment. We now know that some of the changes can go back to normal, like the immune response, epigenetic changes, gut bacteria, um, body weight and metabolites. We also know to expect some changes right after landing, like inflammation and uh, immune response changes. And we also know uh, what we need to pay a special attention to and address as quickly as possible, like um, the small subset of changes in gene expression, telomere dynamics, uh, DNA disruptions, the vascular thickening and stiffness, some cognitive functions, and the ocular changes that cause significant issues. This study also showed us that long duration space flights cause changes that are very similar to aging on Earth. Here's another quote from the researchers about this. Since these changes are dynamic and faster during space travel, studying astronauts may be a resource for understanding the molecular pathways that are altered in individuals as they age on Earth or during development of common diseases. So the treatments uh, we're developing for astronauts could potentially also be used for patients with prolonged bed rest that experience similar issues. The telomere research could also help improve our efforts to mitigate the effects of aging and disease. The proteomic research could help research on traumatic brain injuries as well. And um, there are many other ways in which uh, those space studies can continue to help humankind progress. I was pretty surprised when I saw the level of detailed information that this study generated. I was expecting it to be good, but this seemed pretty phenomenal to me. Did you expect so much to come out of this mission and this study? Let me know in the comments. If you'd like to learn more interesting science stuff, make sure to like, subscribe and click the bell notification. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can visit my Patreon page for more information. For everything else, you can go to respectyourintellect.com and everything will be available there. Until next time, thanks for watching and remember, respect your intellect.